start. Hi, I'm Carolyn uh, with Recreate Designs, and I've been working on this face mask pattern based off of lots of them I've seen online. I've um, just improved upon it to make it a little bit more versatile. It has a little pocket in the back, a nose piece. Um, you can use multiple different things for that, and it has a completely over-the-head um, elastic system that is adjustable um, if you want to make it that way. You can also make two small pieces to go over the ears. There is a link below um, or part of this where you can see the pattern to download it. So I'm going to make it for you here as a demo. Um, it's pretty straightforward sewing. You just really need a straight stitch machine um, and can adapt it to what you need it to be. But the pocket will allow for future um, mask to maybe be installed, filters, that sort of thing. You can put an N95 mask in it for added protection. Um, this, is, this alone is not going to keep you from getting the virus, um, but it definitely is better than nothing. So let's get to it. Um, put that aside. So the first thing um, I would suggest doing is I did some illustration of the how-to list here and how to do the thing with lots of different pictures and a lot of creatives who have sewing machines are going to be the ones that um, do this. So uh, first you want to cut a piece 15 inches by eight and a half and we've been pre-cutting little bundles like this. This is a beautiful fabric someone donated. Thank you Kim. Um, and you're going to want to cut it so that it's 15 by eight and a half. So we pre-cut this to be that size. And what we've been doing with this plexiglass pattern, we put it over, cut it, and actually just shift it another two inches here. And then you get the two uh, binding strips on the side so that there isn't much waste. You can assemble the whole thing until you have elastic. And it's also pretty versatile, so if elastic just never shows up, you could use a um, t-shirt material, cut in about an inch width or less, and you twist it or you pull it and it becomes like a little spiral. and could also be used to tie instead of an elastic. So first thing here is we're going to finish the edges. If you have a serger, this is industrial. Most people don't have this, but a regular serger would work fine. If you don't have a serger, maybe finish it with a zigzag stitch, which will help um, keep the ends nice and tidy and keep it from fraying when it gets washed. Okay, so I'm going to clip those threads real quick. When you, if you're doing a whole bunch of these, you can prep all of them doing this method and then clip all the threads at once. Um, we make lots of stuff here so we're always worried about efficiency. Um, okay so I'm going to go over to the straight stitch machine and we are going to do the next step. And all these steps don't have to be perfect. Um, if you want to iron everything you can, you don't have to. So we're going to so, uh, match the two ends up here with approximately a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you back tack everything, back stitch. This machine, once again, is fancy, so just do a, a back stitch, however your machine does, in about an inch and a half. And this will allow um, enough space for a mask to actually fit inside of it. Okay, so there's that. Um, did that on both sides. And to top stitch it, it's easier actually if you turn it right sides out like this. Um, on this fabric, it's really hard to tell which is the right side, wrong side, but um, then you will want to top stitch uh, that seam open. And you want to always back tack things because these are going to be washed and we want to make sure that they will last more than one time. Um, iron any of this anytime if you want. You can use pins. I'm just doing a really quick demo here. Okay, so now I have my opening slit. You can make it talk if you want to. Um, <laughs> and now we're going to uh, create the, the casement, I guess, for the um, twist tie. Right now we are waiting on our twist tie, so we are going to get creative and use a pipe cleaner here. What I would suggest doing is folding the ends over because the last thing you want to do is poke someone in the face with the sharp ends. The twist ties are going to be nice because they will allow, um, they'll be kind of sealed off so you don't have to worry about poking someone. So you want it to be about six inches. If you love your scissors, do not use them. Use something 
that is meant to cut metal and fold that end over and then position this on the top you basically want uh, about a half inch or maybe a little bit more on the top to be able to insert this uh, be sure not to sew over it with your sewing machine because your sewing machine will not like you so once again we're gonna sew and back tack you might have to move a little bit further away from it um, to make sure that your sewing machine does not hit it okay, I'm gonna rotate and this is an industrial machine um, you don't need that it's just what we have and you could probably use a zipper clip for that if you want to I think the twist ties are gonna be a little easier to sew just for the record now we've fully encased that here, so that part's ready to go. Um, now we're going to do those little, um, the tucks, and this is not perfect, keep that in mind, my stitching is not the best, but I'm just trying to demonstrate this. So you could um, create lots of little devices to make this process a little bit faster or easier for you. I'm just going to freehand it. We want approximately three one inch pleats in it to um, so that it can expand and still have a solid fit around your face. So, um, just sewing like that. We're just basting it. Okay. And here's my little trick. I just slide it over so that it, we're still kind of keeping it in the same direction. I'm just pulling that pleat over. When I make the rest of my stuff, I am a little bit more precise than this, but it's, um, yeah. So now we have all the pleating. You can do this on the next step on the serger or on the straight stitch. Um, I'm going to do it on the serger just because it's a little easier so you can see how that would work if you have that option. So we're going to do this binding strip and you're going to want to do it starting on the back side so that the front side just looks a little crisp and cleaner. And you could start with a longer strip and then trim it down. You don't want to overlap too much on the back because then it'll just add some bulk. So I'm going to sew this and be sure if you had a longer pipe cleaner that you don't sew over it. Otherwise, sewing machine mechanics are going to get very busy. And I'm just wrapping that around. It's about oh half inch or so, quarter inch. And I have measurements for everything um, in my document too, so you can refer to that for actual more information. Or... Okay, so I'm going to trim those threads, and then this is going to just wrap around to the front to create the casement for the elastic. Um, you can use eighth inch, quarter inch. I wouldn't use anything bigger than quarter inch because it's just going to come too bulky. So there's that side. In the side, so I'm gonna take it back over to the straight stitch machine and grab my elastic. So there's a couple ways um, you can do this if you are short of elastic. Um, I have a lot ordered, we'll say. So you might be able to just call me and I can get you some. Um, because around the head's gonna be a lot more comfortable for the people that actually need to wear this on a longer term basis. So I'm just encasing that. I'm not gonna sew my elastic. And I'm just going to back stitch once again, keep that in place. And if the elastic ever needs to be swapped out, it'll be pretty easy. Okay, and then I'm just going to go around this side here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just hand folding this over. Uh, and then I'm going to fold it over again. And if you wanted to do just around the loops, you wouldn't need as long of elastic. And I have it being 30 inches for around the complete head so that it is um, a little bit more adjustable for a lot of different head shapes. So here's basically a very quick mask. You can do an overhand knot here. So grab the two pieces and pull it through and tie it down. That works and obviously a little tighter. Or another way to make it even more adjustable is to do two knots. I remember making necklaces when I was a younger lady this way. Um, so you tie one knot there and then on the other piece do an overhand knot on the other, going the other direction and then this will create a slide so that it can be tightened down. With the thinner elastic 
the eighth inch it will work with the quarter inch it's going to be a little bit too bulky most likely um, so it just slides as much as you need it to and you can tuck that little bit inside the side panels but then this guy is ready to go basically I think I made a little bit too small there but we'll try it so you can wear it around your neck and it stays in place you don't have to worry about it going anywhere um, and then you know you can put that up high just behind your head and then that opens up and so then you can form the nose piece to your nose um, tuck that nicely under your chin and then um, we'll demonstrate next how you can actually insert an N95 uh, mask that you might have at your house or a professional might have it as well so I will add that here in a second okay, I'm ready go okay so if you happen to have one of these masks I um, had some lying around our house for when I do sanding work or other kind of projects where I don't want to breathe in nasty stuff or if you're used to a fire season like here in Montana um, you can insert this directly into the mask and this is why creating a smaller opening is not a good idea because you want to be able to fit this in it just takes a second this is not a I'm going to quickly put it in quickly take it out scenario because you want it to be nice and um, spread out inside of there And this might not accommodate all masks of that type, but it should accommodate a majority of the sizes. And then just kind of close up around there. And that way this gives you um, another layer to kind of keep clean so that you won't have to switch masks as often, or hopefully as often. And so, so this now is with the mask inside there as well. So you have two ways you can clip. I'm using the my nose sounds funny though. Um, I have the original uh, metal piece in there too. So this is, yeah, that's how it is. And I have done, I've done a kid version as well. Um, that's a, just a smaller shape, basically the same process. And that's available on the direction sheet, which is pretty simple to follow. Um, and you can download that from our website, uh, recreatedesigns.com and uh, yeah, thanks for helping out. Stay safe, everyone. Just stay home.